starting with the third strategy, which is to dive deep into your history of loss, rejection, and separation. A strong fear of abandonment is usually the outcome of insecurely attachment styles, especially the unpredictable ones, meaning that one minute they're here, but one minute they're gone. You couldn't count on their availability. This leaves the children to be preoccupied with the whereabouts of their parents. They are consistently following the traces of their parents, like scanning the environment and looking for cues that their parents might leave them if they will ever come back, when they will be back. So this leaves no room for the child to play, to have fun, to explore and create. Basically, the child is just constrained and be hypervigilant about the cues of separation. Examining your childhood experience, has there be repetitive separations? And this could include minor separations like your parents busy on business trips, your nanny gets changed too often, father moving out and moving back in frequently, mothers keep changing boyfriend, or major ones like abandonment or losses of parents. What's the most important thing to look for here is a pattern. Has there been a pattern of unpredictability and inconsistency? For example, my mom, she used to travel a lot when I was only a kid. And when I woke up in the morning and she's gone, and next minute I couldn't find her. And I would, I developed the habit of chasing after cars. And I would sit by the phone waiting for her to call me. And I would skip my naps. Even though when I was like three or four years old, I would know that the phone means mommy might call and I might hear her voice. I want you to recall that your parents take the time to console you and comfort your emotional pain in response to separations. Do you actually feel reassured and relieved or you are left feeling that you cannot count on them to meet your emotional needs? So the child is forced to develop a strategy of dialing up their emotional pain. They cry, they yell, they're inconsolable. They, they make a big scene because they're trying to catch the attention that is unpredictable, that is inconsistent of their parents to get their emotional needs met. And understanding this, understanding your history of rejection, loss, and unpredictable separations can help you make peace with the struggle that you have right now. Because most of us are confused about why we are behaving this way that doesn't really make sense. There are tons of resources online that you can look for to heal insecure attachment, mainly through interpersonal relationships. If you are able to update the experience that you had with your parents, the unpredictable one, the painful ones. If you can nurture yourself, reparent yourself to find safety within yourself and the world, this is how you're changing your history to create a better future. The second strategy is to be aware of how victim mentality plays in your current abandonment anxiety, how it's getting you fixated on being vulnerable and being helpless and giving all the power to the other party. We often fail to see that we're adults now. Adults don't get abandoned. We are all equal here. There's no person with more power or more dominant. There's no person with only vulnerability and helplessness. So if we still see us as this lower position, then everything we do coming out of this place is gonna be defensive, is gonna be hurtful, is gonna be imbalanced. So we have to realize there's, we perceive there's power play in the relationship. If you're looking to play games, yes, there might be upper power. There might be playing hard to get, playing those tricks to get attention, to get people to like you. But in real relationships, it requires two people to have independent soul, to have complete soul themselves. When I started out to heal, I definitely did not like the word of victim mentality. Every time when people point out that Stop playing a victim. I feel exposed because I was like, well, I was the victim, you know, they broke my heart, my parents, they left me and stuff. But one thing I dare not, or I was resistant to admit is that that's my safe zone. That's where I feel comfortable with because I have been playing the victim. I had been the victim my whole life. And now you're asking me to take my power back and that's scary to me. That is why our feelings towards ourselves and others tend to swing between extremes. Because the wounded child gets easily triggered, taking over the rational, grounded adult self that we are today. From this wounded place, we're angry and hurt. 
without protecting ourselves, we may become extremely defensive. We may angrily lash out, blame, accuse, and give ultimatums. Or we go to another extreme, we emotionally shut down, become sad and desperate and helpless. All of those reactions are not helping us today. I want you to drop the storyline of upper power and lower power. It's not helping you. And second, I wanted to drop the victim mentality that has been perpetuating your fear, your desperate clinging, your pain of being abandoned. Those are stories from the past. They need to be updated. Staying in the old game is comfortable, is safe for you. But coming out of that victim mentality really requires courage. It requires you to take all the focus, all the attention you have been projecting outside to yourself. You have to face your painful truth yourself. You have to face the reality that you're in this stage right now and you need to do some work to heal yourself instead of still being distracted by this person A, this person B, and this person C. Take all that attention and focus you put outside back to yourself, return to yourself, work on yourself. And this is the only place that the magical can happen. The number one strategy is to cultivate this ability of tolerating relationship ambivalences. I wanted to spell secret about the security attached. It's not like they don't get triggered of abandonment anxiety. It's not like they're perfectly happy after each separation. It's just that they have better emotional regulation skills. They have a higher level of the inner security to believe that relationship can be stable. That is why for certain people that no reply anxiety doesn't really hurt them that much. Instead, it triggers us, the insecurely attached, the people with attachment wound, to go into rabbit hole, to desperately looking for evidences that this person is leaving, they don't like us, well, our world is crumbling down. People with strong fear of abandonment usually have a strong need for control in relationships. That is our way of establishing safety and eradicate the anxiety caused by that situation. So that is why we often have very strict and rigid rules about how things should go and how people should behave. I remember how I was with my old boyfriend. I used to demand them to text me every morning, every night. They have to call me three times a week and we have to meet up at least one time a week. No exceptions, no excuses. It has to be done this way. Ironically, this kind of behavior drives people away out of suffocation. So to cultivate relationship ambivalence tolerance, we can start small, just to shake things up a little bit, to break our little rule once in a while and see if things turn out to be bad. And usually it doesn't. For example, in the next month, I challenge you to do those exercises. Whenever you have a strong need to attach, do the opposite, focus on yourself. Whenever you have a strong need to control, to manipulate people, focus on just being, not doing extra things. Whenever you have anxiety about things vanishing and have the urge to check in, focus on yourself. Stop nagging out of the habit of venting angrily and learn to take things less personal whenever your partner can't make it and focus on yourself. I have a playlist about using cognitive behavior therapy to help you overcome fear of abandonment. I'm gonna put the playlist up here. I'll see you next time, bye bye.